Miller here on The Buzz, and we want to investigate who killed Robin Williams, who or what killed Robin Williams. And to talk about that, I have a special guest who is a researcher, a scientist, a doctor. Welcome to the program, Dr. Russell Lieberwitz. John, I appreciate your having me today and look forward to talking with you. Well, we want to talk about what killed Robin Williams and uh, my understanding, it has to do with LBD. Can you tell us what LBD is? And I want, I want to talk a little bit about your credentials, but uh, uh, tell me what LBD stands for. Sure. LBD stands for Lewy Body Dementia, and hopefully we'll be able to talk at depth about Lewy Body Dementia, what it is. It's a very scary disease that we're just starting to understand better. And the information about Robin Williams and LBD really came from his family uh, after the fact. But yeah, he was, he, understand. Yeah. He, he went totally undiagnosed with this. Well, you're the uh, CEO and co-founder of Amprion. Amprion is the name of the company. Absolutely. Okay. And Amprion me is the, the dot com. Dot com is the website. Uh, is Amprion, is, is it a made up name or does it stand for something? It, well, it's interesting. It comes from two terms. What we do, and we'll talk about this a little later, is Lewy body dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's diseases are all caused by something called prions or prion-like particles. And okay. Amprion has developed technology to detect these. They were never directly detectable before. And we do it very sensitively by amplifying the very small amount of prions which are present in the brain and in other okay. fluids. So we amplify prions and that's Amprion. Ah, okay. I'm glad, I'm glad I asked. I'm glad you explained that. You also had, uh, in your background, a, a lot of research experience. You were with Baylor uh, College of Medicine in Houston for like, about, I think, 15 years or so, and then Fox Chase Center in Philadelphia. Yes. Yeah. So you've got um, a lot of years looking at diseases like this, other diseases, and, and this one in particular. And this, was, this one is very fascinating uh, from a layman's standpoint. Uh, and very hard to diagnose. So there's a lot of, not only laymen who don't understand it, there's a lot of doctors who are not aware of it and understand it, correct? Correct. Yeah, Lewy body dementia or Lewy body disease is something that although the description has been around for a while, we're really just starting to understand it. And now we have tools to be able to distinguish it from the other diseases which it resembles. And those are Alzheimer's, and Parkinson's, and in some cases, it even resembles neurobehavioral disorders like schizophrenia. So it's a complicated mix of symptoms, but we understand now what causes it, and we're hoping to be able to do something to cure it. Okay, and, and most people are initially diagnosed with uh, Alzheimer's, uh, and, and so you got to kind of peel the onion to get down to find out if it's uh, the LBD, Louis. Lewy body yeah. dementia. Until recently, really the only way one could determine if someone had LBD was after they died and then to actually look at the brain under the microscope. There has been no definitive way. Uh, Amprion is developing or has developed technology that we can now do this while someone is still alive and even at early stages of the disease. And, and that's what happened with Robin Williams. They didn't identify it until after he died. Yeah. So many patients, that's right, with LBD are diagnosed either with Alzheimer's or Parkinson's most of the time because it, unlike almost any other neurodegenerative disease, it looks like both of these. It's almost a combination and then has certain signs, as I said, that might be mistaken for schizophrenia. It's a, it's a bad player. So, oh. you know. It's good that we're learning about it and the fact that Robin Williams' family was willing to talk about it after the fact is going to help a lot of people. Well, yeah, and, and here's, a, here's an individual who had fame and money and, and uh, loving friends around him, a loving wife who, who was trying to support him through all of this. Um, and now she's carrying on work after this, after they discovered what drove him to this. Uh, so she's, she's to be commended. Uh, but yeah, how unfortunate they didn't find out about it until after he died. Well, 
hopefully we can change that now. So what are the, uh, give me the, the early warning signs for Lewy body dementia. Yep. So it's, it's a, a mix as we're talking about. So you would have signs that might look like Alzheimer's or more traditional dementias, and that might include just loss of memory, loss of what we call executive function, which is just the ability to plan your day or plan your tasks out. Uh, also loss of, of normal reasoning. And what we're saying here is this is a change. You notice the family notices that yeah. you know, an individual isn't doing things the way they used to do it anymore. They've had a degradation. There. Well, you know, uh, uh, in that regard, first, my first encounter with someone who had Alzheimer's was a uh, former, I believe it was a banker down in Houston. Uh, and I was at their home and I just met them and I uh, talked to, to the, to the wife and sitting there with several people there uh, to, um, for some reason. And uh, he just sat there very quietly. He was dressed in a business suit, looked like he was, you know, in the office and uh, she had to leave the room. And there were some photos on the wall of, of several, a couple of, uh, of uh, girls and I assume were, were his daughters. And so I asked him, I said, Oh, these are your daughters. Very beautiful. And he looks at them as if he had never seen them. And he stood there and he goes, yeah, this is, and he's, I was taken back. I didn't know what to say. And it took him a while to try to, he was trying to remember their names. And when she came back in the room, she explained what it was, but that was the first encounter I had. And I've always heard that Alzheimer's uh, is where you, you don't, you know, if, you, if you're just getting forgetful, you forget where your key is. If you have Alzheimer's uh, you forget what the key does. Right. No, that's a very good description. It's much more that, you know, everyone loses certain, recall and memory as we age. And it really is something different. So someone might know their address, but no idea how to get there from three blocks away. So Okay, so that different. issue, that is one symptom. Yes. Of Lewy body yeah, disease. Coming. Yes, those would be what we'll call the cognitive symptoms, the okay. Alzheimer's like. But Lewy body disease, Lewy body dementia has a full spectrum of what we would call Parkinsonian symptoms, the same symptoms okay. that Parkinson's patients have. And Parkinson's is a very different disease in that it's neurodegenerative, it progresses over time, but it's really mostly movement disorders, meaning that you're talking about someone doesn't remember the context of their family and pictures or how to get home with Parkinson's. Someone doesn't remember how to swing a golf club or how to swim or how to sign their name. One of the earliest signs of people with Parkinson's is movement becomes abnormal to them and they no longer have the same signature and their signature becomes very, very tiny and cramped. And, but there, they're fully aware of it is when we were talking about the cognitive symptoms the gentleman you were talking to really couldn't remember who these people were and what the context was. With Parkinson's, you no longer can move in a way you used to be able to move. Things as simply as simple as walking no longer. So uh, Lewy body dementia has signs of both, plus a third set of troubling signs, which really are visual and auditory hallucinations, things you might expect in someone who's schizophrenic. They hear voices. They see things. They don't know if it's real or not all of the time. So it's a complex disease. Wow. So uh, three three big signs there. Uh, on that last one, yes. I had in just kind of doing a little research on this because I found it so fascinating. Uh, I heard one story where someone who had the disease, in fact, I think he was a physician, uh, he, he would wake up in the middle of the night thinking he was in a fight. He had delusional, delusional dreams. Um, it, one, time, one time he said he was in a knife fight, another time a gun fight. He actually injured his wife because he thought he was in a fist fight and in the night and accidentally hit her. This is very characteristic of patients with LBD. It's also seen with some frequency in patients with Parkinson's where we call these are, you know, mm. behavioral sleep disorders where we're no longer able when we have dreams to, to inhibit the movements that are in the dreams. And very often both Parkinson's and Lewy body dementia 
some of the first signs come from the partner who suddenly can't be anywhere near the patient when they're sleeping. And there may be no other signs. They're suddenly being hit and kicked. So you, you, you heard exactly right. This is characteristic. Sort of a, a REM sleep disorder associated yeah, exactly. with this. It's called RBD for REM, so rapid eye movement behavioral disorder. And it, it is an early sign for what we'll refer to as a synucleinopathy. And we'll talk about that in a second, but that's what's shared between Lewy body dementia and Parkinson's. They are caused by the same molecules gone rogue. Okay, so well, I'm sure with, with any disease, early detection is, is, is helpful. Uh, is, is there a way to detect this uh, Lewy body dementia early? Is there a test for it? Well, there hasn't been until now, and this is what Amprion is very pleased to be discussing today, that Amprion has developed technology that allows us to measure something that underlies both LBD and Parkinson's, and also the same concept applies to Alzheimer's and a number of other neurodegenerative diseases. And this is the concept of prions and misfolded proteins. So what happens is that in our brain, we have lots of proteins functioning to help us keep normal activities. In a few cases, these proteins can go rogue, meaning that they actually transform into a different shape. So it's very much like a transformer in the movies or the television shows that certain proteins change their shape and turn from being good guys to bad guys. And when that happens, it triggers a series of changes called prion-like changes. And eventually it kills cells in the brain and it kills cells if it, they control movement, it leads to Parkinson's. If it kills cells that control the way that we think and that we store memory, then it looks more like LBD. And in the case of LBD, it usually hits both of these regions in the brain. And Amprion has developed tools to detect these prion-like forms of these proteins, in particular, a protein called alpha-synuclein, which is involved in both Parkinson's and LBD. And we can detect it at extraordinarily low levels. And because of that, we can detect it very, very early in the disease and give patients at least some options, give them years to try to do something either in lifestyle or to enter into a clinical trial uh, to at least give them some accuracy in a diagnosis because so many patients are like Robin Williams where they know something's wrong and they never get an answer in their lifetime. We can help quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very sad. It's uh... Of course, people think about his uh, suicide, but this is what was behind it. And it's unfortunate that uh, he wasn't made aware of it while he was living, um, you know, because he was he was misdiagnosed a number of times. Well, I guess all the way through until until he died. Uh, so if someone feels their loved one or maybe they are having, you know, some of these big three symptoms, big three categories of symptoms, uh, what should they do? Yeah, so once, that, once something is really out of the ordinary, then the general way to go through the, the diagnosis is first to see your uh, general practitioner, practitioner, primary care physician. They can do an examination. They usually have known the patient for a while. If they're seeing changes that are behavioral or movement or memory related or all three, then they are likely to refer the patient in their family to a specialist, some sort of neurologist usually, either someone who, can, who has a specialty in Parkinson's and movement disorders or dementia and memory disorders. There are very few specialists out there who really have the knowledge to put these together to do Lewy body dementia, but it could be either a movement specialist or a memory specialist who would say, you know, you have signs that look like both. And now they can have a test performed, that test, the results would be back in approximately a week and you can get a very, very accurate answer for the first time that there's something going on that it is irreversible, but the earlier one has an answer, the earlier one can try to do something to slow it down. Okay, what's the name of this test again? Yeah, we call it SYNTAP, 
but it's, it's really because it's looking at misfolded synuclein and it measures strictly the misfolded synuclein. So patients who don't have misfolded synuclein, don't have a progressive, don't have LBD and don't have Parkinson's, they don't have this, these progressive neurodegenerative diseases, which can look like other things. So in that case, you're buying someone a great deal of relief. Uh, in other cases, we can say that it's definitively there and that these proteins, these misfolded proteins, prion-like forms are present, they're replicating, and it's like having a diagnosis that you, know, you have accuracy and then the, the, the options are to either change lifestyle and try to slow it down, to enter into a clinical trial. Uh, patients need to have clear answers or they yep. and their families can make decisions. Okay, where, where, what are some resources uh, online where someone could go to yeah. find more information? Yeah, so for LBD um, and all about what I've been talking about with synuclein and prions and misfolded proteins, yeah. at Embryon, we curate a lot of information that we vet and validate. So we try to be a major resource to people in understanding the generation of these diseases, what the various options are. So that is on our website at www.amprionme.com and it's spelled A-M-P-R-I-O-N-M-E.com. There's a, that is a source of which we put a lot of time into, but other sources, there's a Lewy Body Disease Associate, Dementia Association, LBDA. Uh, there's the Michael J. Fox Foundation, which focuses mainly on Parkinson's, but also on LBD because it's also caused by misfolded synuclein and is related in many ways. So those are three really useful sources that I would recommend. Okay, and we'll put those links below the video so folks can refer to them if they didn't get them written down. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Leibowitz, for your time and for what you're doing in this area. Well, thank you, and thank you for what you're doing to help disseminate this information to people who can benefit from it. And I really appreciate your putting me, giving me the chance to speak today. I hope you'll come back and give us some updates uh, on the progress of, of your research. Thank you.